blessed them with paradise, with heaven. Uh, which nights? Five nights that, that are mentioned in this narration are the uh, eighth, ninth, and tenth nights of uh, Zulhijjah. That's three, and the nights, the night of Eid al-Fitr, and the night of the fifteenth of Sha'ban. So those who pray, who stay awake and um, worship Allah Almighty on these nights, they will be blessed with paradise. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, on the blessed day of Eid, the nation of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is given an opportunity to gain forgiveness and mercy from the court of Allah Almighty. Shaitan on this day begins to scream and expresses his concern, cries out, as expressed by the following narration: Sayyiduna Wahab bin Munabbi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he reports Imam Ghazali writes this in his Mukashifat al that when the day of Eid comes shaitan begins to cry out and he screams and all his followers all the shayateen all the devils they gather around him and they ask him about why he's so sad and why he's been why suddenly he's been struck uh, with grief shaitan then reveals that Today, the nation of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam has been forgiven by Allah. So, so this this he mentions this as the reason for his grief, and then he orders his uh, followers, the shayateen. He says, for this reason, distract them, make them indulge in uh, following their desires and uh, following and. Uh, complying with uh, with the pleasures and desires that they have within them now if we think about these efforts of shaitan and uh, his followers the shay- shayateen unfortunately today we see that to some extent he has succeeded with many of our muslim brothers and sisters after um, the blessed month of ramadan after developing a routine of worship and uh, performing good actions suddenly on this day it's as if everything everything that took place in Ramadan has been forgotten or it was only for the month of Ramadan and our and our brothers and sisters they uh, neglect their prayers to they enjoy they they go towards this enjoyment and um, relaxation to such an extent uh, they think that they are uh, simply fulfilling a mustahab action, but they perform sinful actions on the day of Eid, this day of mercy and, and forgiveness and blessings. Shaitan seems to have succeeded. On this day we see many of our youngsters, many of our young brothers uh, driving around, waving flags and to some extent behaving in a foolish way in a careless way causing um, causing a lot of people uh, grief and uh, be becoming an obstruction becoming a nuisance on this day of Eid on this day when the believers uh, should have raised their hands in the court of Allah Almighty and uh, thanked Him for the day of Eid and then spent time with their families with with honor and dignity according to the sunnah way exchanging gifts and expressing uh, this familial bond this uh, love and admiration that they have uh, for each other all that is put to one side and and we have suddenly we have this extreme behavior in terms of uh, love for this world and no concern for the afterlife and no concern for what Islam has told us on the way of Islam another thing that we see on this day unfortunately is that many are inclined to uh, to wasting a lot of money is wasted on um, on haram actions on actions which have no benefit in the afterlife uh, we see how some believers think that this is an opportunity to become completely negligent and spend the day in, in, in leisure and play 
uh, and many uh, if they were asked on the day if we if we look at the number of people in the masjid in the holy month of Ramadan and the number of people who come for the fajr prayer um, before the morning of Eid or the Zuhr prayer on the day of Eid or the Asr prayer on that day we would see the difference suddenly all those believers who were coming to pray regularly they are nowhere to be seen and um, the day of Eid unfortunately has become a day of sin for them instead of a day of attaining blessings from Allah Almighty Allah Almighty does not like people who waste as mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Bani Israel verses 26 and 27 Allah says إن كانوا إخوان الشياطين وكان الشيطان لربه كفورا Translation from Kanzul Iman and spend not extravagantly no doubt the extravagant are the brothers of the devils and the devil is very ungrateful to Allah. So the people who waste, Allah Almighty describes them in His words as Ikhwanu Shayateen. They are the brothers of the devils. So let us be very careful in how we spend our wealth and how we spend, um, the, how we uh, behave in terms of receiving blessings from Allah Almighty. Another reminder for us is that the difference between the human and the animal is that the animal simply thinks uh, plans for the here and now in terms of uh, food, in terms of um, life, the animal, the planning of the animal can be very limited at times. But the human is, is uh, the creation of Allah Almighty that has been blessed with intelligence. The human has the intelligence and the intellect to plan ahead, to plan for um, important events in, in the coming phases of his life. And as far as the believers are concerned, they would naturally think about the afterlife. So if the believer is not thinking about the afterlife, and his thoughts and efforts are confined to this world, and just enjoying this world, then there is not much difference between him and the way of the animals. Allah Almighty has made our purpose in life very clear. As Allah Almighty says, خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا He who has created death and life, that he may test you as to whose work is excellent amongst you. So the purpose of life and death as expressed by Allah Almighty is that we may be tested. Tested to see who amongst us performs good actions. So when we have been given time in this world, how have we spent this time? Have we spent our time obeying Allah Almighty? Or did we completely oppose what Allah wanted and have no regard for the commands of Allah Almighty in the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam? Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, one important aspect of Eid al-Fitr is the Sadaqatul fitr Rulings related to the Sadaqatul fitr can be found in um, Faizan Eid al-Fitr, which is a section in Faizan Ramazan. Also, uh, one may refer to the ulama of the Ahl Sunnah to gain um, more detailed guidance regarding um, the payment of Sadaqatul Fitr. I would like to share with you uh, some narrations related to the Sadaqah Fitr and uh, also just a reminder of the amount and when it can be uh, paid. First and foremost, uh, a narration mentioned in Jami Tirmizi, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam told ordered an individual to announce in Makkah, Makkah al-Mukarrama that Sadaqatul Fitr is wajib. In another narration, narrated by Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam declared that Sadaqatul Fitr is wajib. And he explained the role of Sadaqatul Fitr in this narration. He said, it is purification for the fasts from immoral speech and um, unnecessary speech. 